ਡਾਕਟਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਤੇ ਇਹ ਦੱਸਿਓ ਫਰਾਈਡੇ ਨੂੰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਯੂਨੀਵਰਸਿਟੀ ਆਫ ਵਿਕਟੋਰੀਆ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮਲਟੀ ਫੇਥ ਸੈਂਟਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੱਕ ਪ੍ਰੈਜੈਂਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਵੀ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਟੈਲ ਅਸ ਵਾਟ ਦੈਟ ਪ੍ਰੈਜੈਂਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਇਜ਼ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਸੋ ਦੈਟ ਪ੍ਰੈਜੈਂਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਇਜ਼ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਮਾਈ ਰਿਸਰਚ ਇਨਟੂ ਸਿਕਸ ਇਨ ਡਾਇਆਸਪਰਾ ਸੋ ਫਾਰ ਸੋ what i found is that many people in the community aren't really aware of the of the power of research so i'm mm. going to talk about my my own journey as an academic how i got into research how i've re- researched the community and what sorts of issues i've found in researching you know the the community yeah mm. when you when you talk of the impact of a uh, digital era on religion and how we practice religion yeah i think kafi hat tak in 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 many ways we've seen the the importance of digitization during the pandemic yeah, because yeah. uh the places of worship religious places mm. were closed because of lockdowns and restrictions absolutely, absolutely. so uh, how do you think digital media uh, how has this in- increased enhanced the engagement of the public or has this become uh not as much of a does it compromise the sanctity uh, right. of the religion it's, it's a really good question BJ and, and this is really kind of what started my research off in the first place so mm. when i was you know about maybe getting this alhog and b salhog probably mm. uh, I, i was i was going to gudwaras and they were saying that young people aren't attending you know Jeez. they were saying young people aren't coming all we get is old people please bring our young people to the gudwara but then what i was finding was that young people were organizing events outside gudwaras they were mm. organizing camps they were organizing you know events with their friends they were and then uh, at that time the internet was just emerging online so on the one hand i was hearing people saying get you know gudura and dini why mm. aren't they coming bring them here on the other hand i was seeing all this activity taking place and that was what that's what really got me interested is you know mm. what's going on here how come there the young people are taking things into their own hands and not engaging you know, with the established institutions what's going on so that really le- led me to do my phd mm. where i stu- i studied how Sikhs learn about Sikhi how young Sikhs in Britain learn about Sikhi and I looked at the role of the family of the gurdwara of the of the internet of the of the universities of schooling and it was really interesting to see how things were changing so I'm old enough to remember the world before the internet I don't mm-hmm. know how old you are BJ but you know I'm, I, <laughs> I, 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 I definitely am so for, but the, the funny thing is for young people growing being born born now and growing up now the internet is the norm mm. it's just it's just the way there is no distinction for young people now between the offline and the online Mm-hmm. but for us there still might be something you know mm-hmm. offline and online so it's really interesting how the internet has changed the ideas of religious authority for example and also you see for mm-hmm. instance in the six sphere you see lots of young people producing you know content on youtube in english talking about sick issues and the young people can engage more with this because it's you know it's in the language they understand as mm-hmm. compared to maybe in the gurdwara you see you see an impact on community as well so where is where is for the older generation certainly in britain when they first got there the gurdwara was very important because it was mm. their kind of main focus for community mm-hmm. you know that they would work they would work you know in a workplace but on the on sundays or wherever they would go to the gurdwara and that would be where they would meet people like them right mm-hmm. now that isn't the same for people born and bred in the diaspora mm. because for them they have a community in lots of different ways and and the online right. environment is also providing a certain kind of community as well mm-hmm. so you, you see you know people are, are joining discussion groups online and that sort of thing so it's impacted on community it's impacted on authority and i was just having discussion yesterday also about the way it's impacted on identity so mm-hmm. if you look at if you look at the way for example you know if you look for, uh, for example the way in which different six where where different bug styles different turban right. styles right right, right? we can tell where somebody is from pr- mm. pretty much pretty much from their bug style from a turban style but what's happening now is you see because there's a there's a there's a variety of youtube videos where you can learn any, any style, style you want yeah that's yeah, right so so it isn't clear now what somebody's background is purely from their bug style because they might have just chosen a style they like mm. and you know so it's interesting how that's also impacted on issues of identity as well so basically what it means is and when i've talked to people normally people are born into a family they're born into a religious family and you normally tend to follow the religion that you know the religious practice that your family follows mm-hmm. because that's that's your norm you know mm-hmm. you go to the same gurdwara you do the same sorts of things at home but what the online environment has done is that it's really kind of put everything up in the air because right. everybody now is now knows about different kinds of diversity mm. they know about different kinds of practices so that clear lineage of this is what we do and this is what therefore what you must do and this is what your children will do has been broken by the digital environment in that there's so much more you know available 
So, Dr. Yeah. Singh, uh, the digital environment, it, it's opened up a lot of different spheres in different, different fields. Yeah. When it comes to religion specifically, in your research, have you also seen that there is a lot of pushback because there is also this, uh, there is also this need or this desire to maintain the traditional way of doing things, and mm. the the digital era or the digital uh, sphere may not necessarily be in line, in tune with the uh, with the uh, mm. traditional ways of doing things. Yes. So yes. how how does that how does how does that intersect? And or what sort of challenges does that produce? That again, excellent question. It's something I'm I'm really thinking about. And so the research says that religious communities engage with the online environment in different ways, depending on how they mm. treat, you know, their texts, for instance. So if you look at the right. sick case, yes. look at the sick, sick case, for example, right? And this is something I'm actually going to talk about in my in my in my talk tomorrow. If you look at um, a gutka sab, for instance, mm -hmm. a, a gutka is something that you would it will have gurbani in it. Correct. You would you know you would venerate it. You would it would be wrapped in a in a in a ramal. You would treat it with respect. You would wash your hands before you sit down to do bath, for instance, right? What happens when gurbani ends up on your mobile phone? Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> Doctor Singh, you raise you raise an excellent point. Uh, just a few days ago, uh, some of uh, members, uh, 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 the entire family members, mm. we were sitting around and we were doing uh, the Sukhmani Sa part. Yeah, right. Take the care. the older generations, the the uh, the elders in the family, they had the Gutka Saab. Yep. The younger ones were phones. <laughs> were reading it off of their phones. <laughs> so when on. when when the part was uh, was completed. Uh, the elder ones, uh, they, they bowed to the Gutka Saab, right? They put it up, up against their forehead. Now the younger ones are thinking, now what do I do? Do I put my phone to my forehead? Exactly. And, and, some, of, and some of them did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so in fact, I'll, I'll mention this here. I ran an online survey um, last last year, which is still open, by the way. So if, mm. you could if you could advertise the URL, I'd really appreciate it. Oh, for sure, um, please. I, I, and one of the questions I asked in that was about respect of Gurbani online and what are the sorts of issues that you think you know might might people might face mm. in respecting Gurbani online and much of the discussion was about you know if for one minute you're looking at your phone to watch TikTok videos mm. and the next minute you're looking at your phone to read Sukhumani Saib you know what, what what's going on here uh, is the object still the same does the mm. object become sacred how do you treat it so uh, people were saying to me that you know if they were going to do bard for instance some some of them might use a wipe you know a right. screen a screen right. wipe before they read other people said they might actually have a separate phone mm. for gurbani a separate gadget. versus to their no yeah to their no so i mean and as i say the, the the thing about this there is there's no guidance about this. It's all mm. your own individual, you know, or, or how you think you should do it. But what's fascinating is that all this has changed so quickly since, mm. I mean, mobile phones are just maybe just 10, 10 or 15 years old. So right. there's been so much change in, in recent years that people are still kind of working out, you know, working out what to do with all this stuff. And this is what I find fascinating. These are the, So I'm not going to provide any answers tomorrow. Let me just say yeah. that. But yeah. I'm going to talk about some of these issues that, you know, but we're thinking about okay, what's going on when we're dealing with technology? You know, I, I've also done some research on on translations, for instance. So mm -hmm. you know, lots of lots of gurdwaras have screens in now, and they show translations right. of Gurbani. And I've talked I've talked about the impact of that as well. So I won't say too much now because I don't want to give everything out, everything yeah, yeah, away. For sure, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about some of that, that that tomorrow as well. When when you did your research, you know, when as you said that you did your PhD uh, on the on the Sikh diaspora and how yeah. the practice has changed. You know, we see some of the things which are clear just by looking at the surface as to, you know, how the practice has changed or how the younger generation, uh, they practice the religion. But when you started screeching beneath the surface, what were some of the findings which you were totally uh, surprised by, which normally never really become a part of the conversation or discussion? Okay, so uh, an example that really springs to mind. I, I asked, I asked everybody a question as to why they go to the Gurdwara, and, and this was on a survey mm. back in back in back in 2011. And some of the options I put, I think I put something like, you know, to meet family, to um, to eat longer, mm. to uh, you know, to to meet your friends. I put a whole list of options, right? And it was really interesting to see what happened to my to the responses because I got lots of responses saying to meet the guru. Mm. Right. And I, I hadn't put this on my initial list of, you know, options. Huh? And, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. People were saying, you know, I go to the Gurdwara to mm. be with the Guru. 
Now, mm. it's interesting. Uh, so, so what I did as a consequence of that is I actually did some field work where I spent a week in a Gudwara just seeing who came to the Gudwara when. And what I found was that lots of young people attend the Gudwara in their own time, in their own time, you know, mm. before they go to work on their way home. And I asked them why they do this. And they said they don't want to attend on a Sunday or when the big program is because they don't want all the to put it to put to put it in another way, Damasha, they don't want all the all the hassle, they don't want all the kind of you know displays. Mm. They just want to go there to have an authentic relationship with the Guru Granth Sabji and sit in the presence and you know do it on their own terms. And it was fascinating. I hadn't included that in my initial mm. list of responses, but they themselves were saying this to me that so that's the thing that really came through. It was about an, having an authentic relationship the with connection. Guru Bani. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Dr. Singh, we know that comprehension leads to engagement. Whatever we are dealing with, if yeah. you if, if a person comprehends as to what's going on, yeah. chances are they'll spend more time in it and, and they will be more attuned to, they'll be more, they'll gravitate more towards that message. Yeah. Uh, have you also noticed in your research that w within the diaspora, when uh, for those youngsters who gravitate more towards religion, mm. is there also a language element to it? So, mm. so is there... Uh, the youngsters who gravitate more towards religion would tend to be better at speaking, understanding Punjabi and vice versa, that those who speak or understand Punjabi in a better way would also gravitate towards the religious text. Have you seen yeah. that? It's, again, so it, it's a great question, Vijay. And, and it's interesting. So a few things I've seen. I've seen young people realizing this and maybe mm. who, who didn't pay too much attention in Punjabi school. And to be honest, Punjabi schools didn't get a really good... Um, People mm. weren't saying good good things about Punjabi schools in terms of their learning, but a lot of them actually then decided to go and learn mm. Punjabi or Gurmukhi in their in their older ages, you know, mm. as older teens, to try and understand more about Gurbani. So the language thing is very interesting, especially if you look at the internet, where it's often assumed that a lot of content is in English, but there's mm -hmm. so many parts of the internet that aren't in English, and there's so many different parts of you know linguistically which 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 occur as well and that's something i'm hoping to look at as well is what's the difference between the kind of non-english internet versus the english mm, internet how right. do people engage with that kind of thing and that, as i said as i've already mentioned the issue of translation is something that i talk about a lot because mm. what we often do is and this is true across the diaspora we often try and translate sick terms into Simplistic, mm. simplistic, like, you know, we say Amrit, Amrit Sanjari's baptism, we call Gudwara's mm. temples, you know. And the issue with that is that we lose so much nuance mm. when we're just using simplistic one-to-one -one word translations. What we need to do is be more confident about providing in-depth explanations of our concepts so people understand what the differences are and what the significance is of particular aspects of Sikhi. Uh, Dr. Singh, you raise a very good point because over the course of the last few years, and I think our listeners would also agree with this, even within the mainstream coverage of events of various religious uh, uh, important days related to the Sikh faith, even now in the mainstream reporting, the word uh, Gurdwara, mm. Guru, Absolutely. Langar, they Absolutely. are beginning to be used now yeah. rather yeah. than saying the community kitchen, the, the, the main yeah. preacher, are yeah. saying the Sikh temple. Now, the, the actual words which which signify that place or that uh, or that action uh, are being used even in mainstream reporting. So that that uh, um, uh, that transition is happening. I mean, it's fundamental because Gurdwara has the word guru in it. Correct. OK. OK. And if you don't use the word Gurdwara, so whenever I start a talk about any mm. when I do, I do assemblies to kids at schools. I, I talk to my students. I, I, I stress the importance of the guru in Sikhi because it's mm. the guru is fundamental. Without the guru, there's, you know, there, there's nothing. And if you use the word Gurdwara, that further emphasizes the importance of, of the guru. Mm. Whereas if, you, if you're using temple, Temple, mm. temple doesn't really mean the same thing. So I, I think it's a question, but I understand why it's happened. Obviously, you know, people yeah. people arriving in a new country mm -hmm. want to try and use terms that the that the, that the, that the you know host community can understand. But now we've been established for. I I, I went to Palda yesterday. No. You know, uh, up, mm. in, up, up in up uh, in up in Vancouver Island, yeah. and th there are families there who've been here for five generations. Right. So we, we we've been here long enough. Now we we should be confident enough to use our our own terms and take the time to explain what they what they mean. Mm. Dr. Singh, when we see all this digitization happening, we are going through this change and there is also 
uh, we've gone over the issues regarding how to maintain the sanctity of the scriptures and, and all of that. Yeah. Where do you see the future? Where do you see all this headed as you as you uh, as you weigh into uh, all the changes, all the technological advancement that we're going through, and all the uh, the engagement that the yeah. that the online platform is generating? Where is all this going to go, according to you? Okay, so <laughs> one thing I've quickly realized is it's very difficult to, to predict the future when it mm. comes to technology. Mm -hmm. I, I, again, I'm old enough to remember discussion boards. I'm old enough to remember CDs, VJ. Do you remember CDs? <laughs> oh, yeah. That, 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 that were going to change the world. <laughs> and nobody uses them anymore. That's no one true. uses them anymore. No one uses DVDs anymore, you know? Um, and like Facebook was going to change everything. Facebook's on, uh, on the decline now. Mm. Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok just came mm. out of nowhere pretty mm. much in 20 in 2016 so but all these things are different kinds of kinds of ways of engaging i think things are going to change all the time but fundamentally i think it's it's all about it's all about understanding and, it, and I, what this appears to have done is it appears to really individualize the journey in, in lots of mm. ways as well mm -hmm. but also especially with the pandemic and the pandemic was unexpected but what i think the pandemic has done is that it's emphasized the value of the offline. I mean, we're, we've all been desperate. Mm. You know, in, in Leeds, we had a Nugget Geek then after two years, and yeah. the turnout was amazing. Everybody was desperate for the offline engagement. So there's only so much you can do online. That, mm. that, that, I think that's, you know, it's, mm. it's got, it's, and like any tool, you know, like any tool, a hammer can hurt your finger, a hammer can, you know, you know, bang in a nail. Like yeah. any tool, it can be used for good or, or, or bad. That's all it is, really. So it, it, it's important, but I think we must remember that it's only you can be used best in conjunction with, you know, the, 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 the real world, let's say, as well. Dr. Singh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And <laughs> Likewise, Vijay, thank anything you. Anything else that you would like to add? Because th this is such a vast subject. There could be so many different, uh, you know, uh, angles that we could be uh, talking about. But, you know, time, we're kind of up against sure. the clock here. No, so well, if if I could please ask people to fill in my survey, I'll, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the, because I, I want to get responses from across the diaspora. I've got quite a lot from uh, the UK. I've got some from Finland and various other places. I've got some from Canada, but it would be great to get, so the, the questions are basically asking about digi digital engagement and mm -hmm. how that how that impacts on people's engagement with religion. So if I if, if I send you the URL, if you could, um, if, sure. I, if, if, if you Google Leeds University Seek Survey, okay, hopefully hopefully it, sh it should come up. Leeds University Seek Survey. Y yes, yes, yeah, the, yeah. The, there's an article uh, if that comes up which has got the link link on it. So yeah, if if you just Google Leeds University Seek Survey, then. Um, Hopefully the link will come up. Yeah, I do want to ask you one more question, Dr. Singh, uh, sure. just to uh, gain some more insight. Sikhism, uh, just by the appearance of the religion and the practice of the religion, when people go travel outside of, uh, of India, Punjab, yeah. Yeah. Uh, where the religion was born, uh, this is uh, the, the, the very attire uh, makes other people uh, tell them that this person oh. comes from a different culture, comes from a different That's background. Right. This That's person right. looks different, dresses differently. Uh, how has the diasporic uh, experience evolved over the last few decades because of the different identity, but carrying those values within those different countries? Are there certain countries that you've seen where the transition or the, or the acceptance has been uh, harder than others? Uh, yeah. So if you could speak to that, please. So two points on that. I think firstly, purely as, as you say, as a consequence of their distinct identity, Sikhs have often been the first mm. community to have faced issues in terms mm. of, so in the UK, for example, there were issues with um, bus drivers and, you know, uh, so there, there were bus campaigns, there were motorcycle campaigns in the 1960s and 70s. There was a campaign in the 80s about um, kids wearing or, or turbans in their school. So because of this identity, Sikhs have often been the first communities mm. to, to to kind of, you know, have to tackle issues of multiculturalism, for instance. So that, that and, and, and also as a, as a minority, you know, you, it me, the, this responsibility means you kind of have to stand up. So they've been quite political as purely as a consequence mm. of that to be to begin with. And sorry, Vijay, what was the second part of the question? So uh, it was also about, are there certain countries where it has yeah, come to your yeah, notice yeah. where so, uh, it's yeah. been, yeah. So, so as you know, you know, and we're in Canada. So France has been been particularly mm. uh, difficult in terms of the legislation and the whole laïcité formation. Um, 
otherwise, I mean, and obviously there's always there's, there's always generally suspicion around the group. So you generally face issues about around the Dastar and then and then pretty much, you know, soon mm. soon later it's about the Kurban, isn't it? So those two things generally come up in, in various countries. And then I think it's about the longevity of the community. So now now those have been addressed in the UK and in Canada, but say for example, yeah. Australia Australia have faced issues recently. So right. it's all about, again, it's all about how how long it's taken for communities to be there and to establish mm. institutions. But I guess that's where the digitization also comes back, where you could reach people yeah. uh, um, online who yeah. would maybe you would not have a chance to speak to face to face. No, so I, I, I've got, I've got, I've got a friend. I've yeah. got a friend. I've got a friend who who does um, videos on TikTok, mm. and he's he's reaching literally, mm. literally reaching millions of young people, and he's he's talking about his Judah. He's talking about you know what's under the under the the star, you know. So that's all stuff that that wouldn't have happened in those numbers before. Mm. Dr. Singh, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and I truly wish that we can do this sometime again in the future. Absolutely. Well, BJ, the power of technology, you know, we can do this in the UK, <laughs> so I'd be, I'd be more than happy to. Thank you so <laughs> much, Dr. Singh. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye Take care. Bye-bye.